Hi everybody, so today I'm going to be going through an essential bicycle maintenance skill which everybody should know, <laughs> like the back of their hand. Uh, if you own a bicycle, um, we've all experienced punctures in the past and they can be a bit of a nuisance, you know, a lot of people are, aren't able to change the puncture themselves so they're, they're actually waiting on their local bike shop to, to do the job for them. Now it's a very easy job once you get the hang of it, um, so today I'm going to run through that with you. Now, in the past, people would have changed or fix a puncture a lot with a puncture repair kit. Now the thing with a puncture repair kit is it's a quite it's a it's a fairly tedious job and you know there is a bit of skill to it, you know, there's um it's a bit of a mess with it and you know sometimes it doesn't go right and sometimes you can't fix a puncture with a puncture repair kit. Puncture repair kit works by basically putting a patch on the hole in the tube from where it was um punctured. So yeah, puncture repair kit, you know, I wouldn't be the biggest fan of them, you know, just because, you know, there is that risk that you mightn't actually fix the puncture first time around. So what I'm going to be doing today is basically showing you how to change the inner tube of the wheel, okay? Now, inner tubes are relatively cheap. You can get them in your local bike shop for the price of 5 to 10 euro. I'd always advise any bicycle owners to have two or three of these, you know, uh, kept at home at all times because they are a lifesaver and if you can change them yourself you know you're saving yourself so much time and so much hassle and you'll have yourself up and running uh, back cycling in no time so with that what we'll need today first of all we need our inner tube okay we need uh, a bicycle pump okay a uh, bicycle pump can be got in the local bike shop uh, a lot of people use the standard track pump like i have here you can also use the small hand pump and um, it's perfectly fine it does the job and also what you need is tire levers okay so tire levers are used for taking the taking the tire off the rim and um, they're a very useful tool now if you don't have tire levers and um, your local bike shop will generally have everything that i'm just dis uh, discussing here but if you don't have tire levers what I've used in the past to get me out of a, a, say, a sticky situation was the backs of cutlery. So the backs of knives and forks, they have, some of them have a, a round, smooth edge. Now, this isn't the bladed part of a knife or the, the spiky part of, part of a fork. The back end of a, a, a knife or fork or spoon, whatever, if they have a rounded edge, they can they come quite handy, you know, for taking off the tire and, and levering it off. Okay, so first of all, what we are going to do is I'm going to show you how to take the tire off the rim, okay? So using your tire lever or whatever you're using to to take the tire off the rim, we stick it in underneath the wall of the tire here and pull it down like so, okay? Now most tire levers have a hook on them, okay, that you can hook around the spoke, which will make it easier for inserting your second tire lever. Now generally the tire on a mountain bike rim comes off fairly easily. Road bikes are fairly difficult because the tire sits tightly on the rim, which can make it a, a difficult job to get the tire off the rim. But so with a bit of hard graft, it comes off fairly easy. Now with a mountain bike tire, it's fairly straightforward. So I'll put my second tire lever in and then I'll slide it along. Now you'll see the set, this tire lever comes off. Then we just need the one tire lever, okay? So from here, we're sliding the tire lever along the rim and that will take the, fir the first wall of the tire off, okay? So, a bit of patience, slide the tire along, okay? Now, from there, we have the first wall of the tire off, okay? Now, generally with mountain bikes, a lot of the time, once we have the first side of the tire off, the tire the tire rim should pop off. Okay, another thing what not worth noting is, have your valve screwed off. The valve cover should be always screwed off. This will allow your tube, to, uh, the tube that's currently in the rim to come off, okay? So, the tire should just pop off like so. Once we have that first wall off, okay? Like that, okay? Now, from there on, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the old inner tube from the tire, like so, okay? Nice and easy. Fairly straightforward so far, okay? Now from here, the next important job to do 
is search the inside the tire for anything that is got stuck in the tire that could cause a puncture when we put the new tube in or anything that has caused the previous puncture okay now you can do this by running your hand along the inside or you can do a visual check for now I'm just gonna run along the inside of the tire with my hand now if you feel anything that you know has a bit of a spike in it or anything like that then you should take that out okay this tire looks fairly good okay so a lot of the time a lot of the time you can find bits of glass in them or thorns or something like that now so this is you know you should be very careful when running your hand along the inside of the tire just in case there's anything that could you know cut your hand or something like that but this tire is fairly good okay now i'll leave this tire down and the next thing we need to get our inner tube ready for placing it into the rim as a replacement okay now inner tubes can be got you know from for five to ten euro in your local bike shop they are relatively cheap and um, you know puncture repair kits are around the same five euro there's a lot more work in changing the puncture with a puncture repair kit and as i said before you know a lot of the time you don't get it right depending on where the puncture or where the you know the torn or the glasses uh, cut the inner tube so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our pump okay now we're going to place a small bit of air inside the inner tube okay just to give it some shape for when we're placing it back into the rim okay so a couple of pumps not too much okay so now the inner tube has some shape okay so this will allow us to put it back into the rim without too much hassle so if we don't put air into it back into the tire or back into the tube sometimes we can pinch it when we are placing the the tire back on the rim okay so the next thing we're doing is we're placing the tire back onto the rim before we put our inner tube in okay so this is a fairly straightforward job now if you struggle with this you can use your tire lever to get the tire back onto the rim okay like so yeah now the next thing is we're placing the inner tube back in okay so on the rim there's a hole for where the valve of the inner tube sits in so that's going to go in there like so now the next thing all we're going to do is we're going to feed the tire back in between the walls or we're going to feed the inner tube sorry back into the tire walls okay like so we're making sure it's sitting in perfectly yeah okay now the next thing once we have the type the tube placed back within the walls of the tire we're going to gently feed the tire back onto the rim okay so we have one side on already before we put the tube on now we're putting the second side back on okay so we're nearly done now this is a fairly straightforward when you're working with mountain bikes and stuff but it can be a bit more complicated when we're using a road road bike tires or anything like that because as i said before the road bike tire tends to grip the rim a bit more now what can happen is you will get to a point where you struggle to get the tire back on like so so you can see just sitting over the rim okay so what we do here is we get our tire lever again a lot of the time tire levers come in pairs so if you need a, a one tire lever to push one side in you can use the other one to get another side in you can w gently ease it in but this time we shouldn't need the two tire levers now perfect okay now we have our tire back on the rim just like that fairly straightforward nothing too complicated so first of all we're going to run our hand and have a visual check just to make sure we're sitting on perfectly and we're all looking good okay the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put air back in the tire okay now a lot of people don't know what tire pressure goes into their tire okay so generally most tires have the psi written on the side of them and that's the psi you're going to pump the tire to once you get the tube changed okay so this tire it states that we should inflate to 30 to 50 psi now it's also 
2.1 to 3.4 bar okay this pump measures in psi so i'll be putting 35 psi back into that tire now a lot of good track pumps have a have a gauge on them so you can see what you're putting into them but if you don't have a gauge you can just go you know by pushing your finger down we're not going for a rock hard we're going for somewhere in between where there's a small bit of give in it but not too much give that you could cause a pinch puncture when we hit something out in the road okay now just coming up to 35 psi there now okay and that's us good to go So we screw our valve back up, put the valve cover back on, it's just best to for protecting it and stop it from getting damaged or something like that. And there we have it, that's how you change an inner tube and hopefully it's a skill that you can, you don't have to practice too often but it's an essential one to know if you're a bicycle owner and from there on in you know you've just learned the one of the most essential bicycle maintenance skills there is. So thanks for tuning in.